everybody, I'm Amber Ryan and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I am playing the first TBR Clue game of the year of 2024. Uh, which is just crazy to think about, honestly. I am super excited. Now, as of filming this intro and everything, I've already played the game itself. Um, and it was a little wild. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's just get right into it, okay? So, uh, this is going to be a crazy month, so strap in and let's play the game. <laughs> first game of 2024 <laughs> let's see how this is gonna go okay first room five romance okay that's not a bad room to start in let's see how many spaces do we get to move two one or three spaces I think I'm gonna just go straight and go one, two, three. Not think too much about it. <laughs> it's hard to tell, but it says book 58. Can tell because I also have it on the spine. It's a little wear for tear. <laughs> 58 is a two word title. Shouldn't be too difficult. <laughs> Alright, so for roll one, I ended up in the romance room with book number 58, uh, which is a two-word title. Now, this one was easy enough. I actually had a few to choose from to fit this prompt. Uh, it was a fairly simple prompt to start off on with the month, so I was pretty pleased with that. Um, so... I chose to read Night Shift by Annie Crown. Um, yeah, it's 302 pages long, so a pretty average length for me. And honestly, I just kind of wanted a cozy, simple uh, romance to read. And this is one of the newest books that I have recently added to my shelves as well. So that's probably another reason why I chose this one specifically. Um, but mainly because it was also an average length because as you will see a few of the other ones that I have chosen for the month are actually pretty thick books so I figured it'd be nice to kind of have a nice simple cozy type of read in the mix and uh, these kind of books are just I feel like I fly through them uh, they're really enjoyable and yes so I believe I've actually heard of this one before or this author I I believe it's popped up on TikTok or something of the sorts. So, uh, but this was a random find at Barnes and Noble. So, um, or was it Walmart? I don't know. <laughs> it's on my haul video. Um, but yes, so I chose this one for that prompt. Super simple. Uh, it was a great start to the month. And from here on out is when it starts to get uh, a little bit more out of hand and it, as we continue on it'll get a little bit uh, out of control so but we started off nice and strong <laughs> back to the center of the board we are on roll number two let's see <laughs> I'm super excited for this month's game I'm not even kidding okay that is a nine so we are in the horror room. Super glad that we I decided to switch around the numbers this year for the genres to change it up. Because <laughs> I think that would have originally been the nostalgia room. So, but nope, we are in the horror room. Woo! Okay, how many spaces? Double sixes. So that adds an extra roll to the end of the game. So we can basically move six or 12 spaces. Uh, we do have the Raven bonus in this room. Uh, if I get that, my mom picks a book that I will read this month, which would be interesting. I've never actually had that bonus yet. So it would be interesting to get it if I can get it. Okay, so I don't think I can quite get the Raven bonus just yet. Um, but I will try and go for this book. 
yeah one two three yeah one <laughs> one two three four five six I second guess myself for a second and that is book 60 okay so it has to be a horror book with a cover that is set outdoors okay that'll be interesting to find out what I read for that one <laughs> Roll number two, I ended up in, in the horror room, actually, uh, with book 60, um, which is a book that has a cover that is set in the outdoors. So uh, I actually had, again, plenty of books to choose from uh, to fit this prompt, um, especially now that I've reorganized my shelves and I can so easily find things that go with my each genre that I'm searching for. Um, and this is the first thick book of the month that I'm going to be introducing you guys to. I believe this has actually been on my TBR before and I just didn't get around to it. I think I was going through a reading slump. Um, but Rules for Vanishing by Kate Alice Marshall. Now, I believe Meg with Books was also supposed to read this book at some point last year, and that's what uh, encouraged me to put it on my TBR for that month, and I don't know if she ended up reading it or not. Um, I don't, I never heard her speak of it again, <laughs> so uh, either I'm behind on her videos or she didn't get to it. Um, but yes, so I'm finally going to get around to reading this. I've actually had this on my shelves uh, since well before I started filming. I've had it for quite a while actually. Um, I think I actually got it fairly after it came out and I believe it's been out for a while now. So it's been at least a couple years that I know of uh, that I have had this book. So, uh, but it always just sounded really interesting to me. Um, and it, for some reason it kind of gave me like the Blair Witch Project kind of vibes when I read the summary and from what I have heard about it. So I'm very interested to find out. I also love paranormal stuff and I believe this has that. So I am kind of excited but it is 409 pages long so it is a lengthier one uh, which is also always kind of daunting to me. Uh, but once I get started it's great. Um, it's just you know getting started you know motivating myself to start a thick book uh, is probably the hardest challenge but once I get into the book and I get reading and if it, especially if it's a really good book then I feel like I fly through it and it's great um, and I have a great experience but if I don't like it then I and I push myself through it then uh, yeah it's just a not not great so uh but hopefully i will really enjoy this one i'm really looking forward to reading it and finally checking it off of my list to read um i'm actually really looking forward to it though so i am accepting this challenge <laughs> roll number three let's see let's see okay that is a four so we are in the historical room. Okay, it's been a while since we've been in that room. Let's see if we have any luck. Let's see how many spaces we move. Five, two, or seven. I don't know if you guys could see the four there, but. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm just gonna make it easy and go one, two. That is book 30, a book about reading books or a writer. Okay, for nostalgia that may be a little weird. Roll number three, I ended up in the historical room uh, and I got book number 30, uh, which is a book which is about books or writing. Um, now with a historical book, that was actually pretty difficult with what I had on hand. I have very few historical books actually in my collection currently. And honestly, I had just bought a bunch of new books, so I didn't want to buy another one so soon. Um, 
so I decided to choose a historical book that I already had in my possession. <laughs> um, unfortunately, it doesn't really go with the prompt, but it is still a historical book, so I am sticking to the genre. Um, and honestly, this is a book that I've been dying to read for a while, and I just took the chance and went with it. So hopefully you guys will just let us slide about the prompt. Um, but I am reading Dead Dead Girls, a Harlem Renaissance mystery. Um, and I'm, I know I'm going to say her name wrong. I just know it. Uh, Nikisa Afia. I'm so sorry. I know I like, I shouldn't have even tried saying that author's name. But this always seemed like a really interesting book. Um, and I bought this one and Murder Knocks Twice. Um, by a different author that's also a historical mystery at the same time and I've been dying to read both of them and just for some reason haven't got around to either of them um, it's very not very often I end up in the historical room at all on the board so I just haven't had that many chances honestly um, but I am excited to finally read this one and see what it's all about and kind of just really get into it. And I always love the 1920s. So any chance I can find historical books set in the 1920s, I grab them. <laughs> and both this one and A Murder Knocks Twice, I believe, is set in the 1920s. So that's why they were chosen. <laughs> um, but I'm going to go with this one. It is 312 pages long, so it's another average length book for me. Uh, which is also another great sign that I will hopefully enjoy it and fly through it. And, um, yeah, so I believe it's, yes, it takes place in 1926, uh, according to the back. So, but it seemed like a very interesting book. Um, I believe it's a murder mystery as well, so... I just kind of really want to dive into it. I believe this is actually either a trilogy or a series, um, but I know there is more than one book in this set in this world, so uh, if I enjoy it, maybe I'll add another series to my list. I don't know. I have so many series going on right now, but uh, I hope it's an interesting book, so there we go. <laughs> Roll number four. eight mystery okay okay that's a really good room for me how many spaces do we get oh double ones that is still doubles so that adds another roll to the game okay so one or two spaces though i don't think i can do it oh maybe i can okay <laughs> you guys really get a top overview of the mystery room here Obviously, there's only one choice I can make here, so one, two. <laughs> I don't know if I pushed that book or not, but it, now it's there. <laughs> book 48. A book with chapter names. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to be honest. For roll number four... I ended up in the mystery room and I got book number 48, which is a book with chapter names. Now I actually did have um, a little bit of an issue finding a book to fit that prompt, uh, but I did end up with actually a few options to choose from. And honestly, I was going to cheap out and just choose uh, my next Nancy Drew book. Um, and be my first Nancy Drew book of the year, but I didn't really want to cheap out on this one, and I did happen upon a book that I bought in New Orleans uh, back in July, and so it's been on my shelf since then, that ha and it hasn't been touched, um, so I figured I would just go ahead and choose that one, and uh, that is The Last Madam, A Life in the New Orleans Underworld by Christine Wiltz. And, you know, it just sounds so out of this world. I believe it could have probably also went for a historical book, honestly. I didn't think of it. Um, it takes place back in um, 1916, I believe. Um, and then it, you know, it goes through to the 1920s. It's basically following this character growing up in New Orleans back in the day and uh, surviving in the underworld, <laughs> basically. So it just, it sounded, ooh, I'm like turned really orange because of sliding. I don't know what's going on there. 
Anyways, so excuse the orangeness, I guess. Um, <laughs> but this book just sounded super like interesting and it was very like it just sounded really original basically it sounded very unique and I had never heard of anything like it before and I did find it in New Orleans I bought it in New Orleans so uh, that also adds a little bit mystique to it so I really look forward to finally reading this and seeing what it's all about and yes so I think it's going to be a good read oh I already see like old pictures so, uh, it should be interesting. I don't know how much of it is based on truth, um, but I do believe it is inspired by, you know, it's inspired by real history, but I think the character in the story is, um, is fiction. So, I shall find out, but it seems super interesting and I can't wait to kind of be thrown into that world and see what it was like back then. So... I thought it'd be really fun to finally just get around to reading it. All right, roll number five. Room two, which is the adventure room. Let's see how much we get to move around. Five, four, or nine. Okay, five, four, or nine spaces. I mean, obviously, I'm going to go for one two three four I can hear my cats getting up to something but I'm choosing to ignore it <laughs> compass bonus so I get to spin a wheel and find out what I'm gonna read okay so for roll number five I ended up in the adventure room and almost every time I end up in the adventure room, I feel like I try to aim for the compass. And it just, it seems to happen almost every time I end up in that room. Uh, because that room, I used to call it the cursed room for me. Um, but honestly, this year, I think it'll turn around. I think it'll become a, a good room for me. Uh, but this time, I did go ahead, because I had so many new books I wanted to read at the time, um, I went ahead and grabbed the compass bonus. So, uh, which means I get to spin a wheel with uh, all these different books that I have chosen and uh, that I've thrown on this wheel, and I get to spin it and find out what book I'm adding to my TBR for the month. So. Um, <laughs> I've chosen about two from each genre that I'm interested in. So, starting with horror, I have chosen uh, Taste Like Candy by Ivy Tholen. I believe this is a self-published book. I found it on Amazon, and honestly, it wasn't very expensive. I think it was $7. I could be wrong. Um, and it has been a while. I bought it... I bought it a while ago, but I have had this on my book, uh, shelves, dying to read it for a while. So there's that. Also is a new book to my shelves that I've been dying to get my hands on for a while. Episode 13 by Craig DeLouis. As you can see, this one is a thicker book. So we will, sh we will see. <laughs> But those are the two horror books on this month's wheel. Um, we also have two mystery books. Uh, we have A Dead and Stormy Night, uh, which I have had on my TBR previously, I believe in October, and I just didn't get around to it. So it is making a reappearance on this month's wheel. Uh, I really just want to finally read it. Um, I also have Murder, She Wrote by Stephanie Kuhn. Uh, this one has also been on my TBR before, and I just, I would really love to finally enjoy this book and read it. And then I have my two romance, uh, which is The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. This is another book that's been on my TBR for before I have the whole series and I've honestly wanted to read this one for so long now it's been over a year and I want to finally tackle this series so I'm actually kind of hoping I get this one however it is a thicker book as well so it will be a challenge but I honestly am just ready to face it head on now and tackle this book uh, also for romance I have 
One That Could Double for Fantasy, uh, Torn by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the sequel of, uh, this is the second book in the Wicked trilogy. I read Wicked, uh, was one of my unwrapped books from my sister last year. I believe it was in July, and I really enjoyed that book, so I bought the sequel. And, uh, so yes, I kind of hope, you know, it's on the wheel. We'll see if I can finally read it. <laughs> And I have my two fantasy books. Uh, one is another sequel, uh, The Haunted by Jessica Verde. It's another thick book as well. Uh, this is a sequel to The Hollow, um, which is a Sleepy Hollow uh, inspired trilogy. Um, the first one I had mixed feelings about and I heard the second one is better and I own the whole trilogy now so it'd be awesome if I got this but it is a thicker book as well. Uh, I just really wanted to challenge myself this month I guess so uh, we shall see if I get this one. <laughs> And so this is After by F.T. Lukens. This has been on my TBR before, uh, but for some reason this one and Spellbound just have, have been on my TBR almost nonstop. And for some reason I've never gotten around to either of them, so I would love to finally tackle both. Um, so this one is on there. <laughs> and of course I had to add the next Nancy Drew book, uh, Password to Lake Spur Lane. This is number 10 in the series. Um, continuing on with those, I'm going to finally tackle the rest of them. Um, so yes, that is all the books finally on this month's wheel. Let's we'll see what I get. it to choose one of the shortest books out of the stack that I put on this wheel um, but that is actually pure luck <laughs> I am actually really excited to read this though I really enjoyed the TV series um, this is 283 pages long so it's below average I should fly through it quickly when I finally get to it so uh, this is actually a pretty good choice for me so especially this month but I'm I'm excited okay I'm surprised. <laughs> Alrighty, roll number six. This would originally be the last roll of the game, however we've added two extra rolls because of the doubles. Seven. So we are in the thriller room. Four, two, or six. Okay, four, two, or six. I think I'm just gonna go to make it easy and go one, two. Straight forward. And that is book 59. A book based in fall. Okay. Okay, so for roll number six, so this was a little bit of an interesting one. Um, I ended up in the thriller room with book number 59, which is a book based in fall. Now the thing is, <laughs> I, it turns out, do not have a thriller based in fall uh, that I was able to find. Um, now if I do find one before this video goes up, before I have it finished, like before I have it, before I finish editing this video, if I happen to find one uh, in my collection, I, like I said, I don't want to buy any new ones because I just bought a slew of new books. Um, but if I happen to find a thriller that is based in fall in my collection, I will go ahead and add that to the mix. But honestly, I already have so many books on this month's TBR that I wasn't too worried about having this one. Uh, but I just didn't find one. Honestly, I thought about just throwing in, like I did for the historical, just throwing in a thriller that I've been wanting to read, uh, even though it didn't match the prompt. And I may still do that. Uh, I haven't fully decided yet. Like I said, I already have seven other books that will be on this month's TBR. Uh, so unfortunately, this may just be one that I do not fill. <laughs> um, 
but I just couldn't find one uh, so far in the collection and yes so unfortunately I do not have one to match up to that prompt as of right now like I said before I finish editing this video I may find one and add that to the mix but uh, we shall see <laughs> roll number seven Eight. We are back in the mystery room, which like I said, is a great room for me. Okay, let's see how many spaces we get to move. Five, three, or eight spaces. One, two, three. Book 63. A book featuring travel. Okay. Roll number seven. Uh, we ended up in the mystery room, which is honestly one of my favorite rooms on the board. Um, <laughs> and I ended up with book 63, uh, which is a book featuring travel. So this one ended up being a fairly easy choice for me. I only had a couple options. And the one I chose was actually on my TBR, I believe, for... Was it October, maybe, of last year? I don't even know at this point. They're all running together. But it is a classic mystery book. Uh, let me grab it off my cart. So this one ended up being a classic mystery book about travel. <laughs> Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. Of course, I've been dying to read this one ever since I saw the movie uh, with Johnny Depp in it. And I really enjoyed that movie, and ever since, I've kind of been on the Agatha Christie kick. Uh, I read Death on the Nile, Halloween Party, um, what was the other one? There was another one, The Last Seance one. Uh, I read that one. So, <laughs> yeah, I believe that. Yeah, The Last Seance. Uh, so, I have read those. Oh, and then there was none. Then there were none. Yes, I believe that's all the Agatha Christie's I've read so far. So I finally wanted to read this one, um, Murder on the Orient Express, and it was super good, um, which because I had seen the movie, I knew how it was going to play out and how it ended, but it was still pretty great, and it was actually, it was really enjoyable. It only took me a couple of days to read, and as I just let it slip, yes, as of right now, filming this video, I have actually already read it. Um, I am filming this on January 6th and I read started this book on the 3rd and finished it on the 5th which the one day in the middle I ended up not reading at all so it only took me a couple days to read this book and I really enjoyed it so uh, I can actually already check this one off but this was the one I chose for uh, the featuring travel mystery book um, now this one is 265 pages long and like I said I really enjoyed it I'm giving this one a five star rating uh, but more details on it in the wrap-up video um, but yes so this was the one I chose for that and I read it this month so it still counts um, but yes the Queen of Mystery strikes again okay now unless I get another pair of doubles this next time I roll this is the final roll of the game roll eight gonna have a large TBR this month Room five, romance. Okay, that's a good room to end it in. Let's see how much I get to move. Three, four, or seven spaces. Okay, three, four, or seven. Oh, you know what I've gotta do. <laughs> we have the love potion bonus in this room. I still have three books to unwrap from my sister from this last batch and we're about to do a new batch for the new year so I feel like I've got to go for it <laughs> one two three oh yeah <laughs> love potion <laughs> 
Now for the very last roll of the game, roll number eight, I ended up in the romance room and happened upon the potion bonus, which is very exciting for me. Um, now for those of you who may be new, the potion bonus is uh, where I get to unwrap a book that my sister has sent me. Um, now back last year, I forget around what time, I think it was around February maybe, um, not February. Was it? Yeah. I think it was around February or March. It was around that time where I asked, sent my sister $100 and I was like, hey, go nuts. Pick all the books you want me to read uh, that within that $100 range and send them to me and I will have mom wrap them. Um, and that is what she did. She did not disappoint. Uh, given about 90% of them were Jennifer L. Armentrout books, <laughs> which she did not realize. Um, I believe only one that have, I haven't unwrapped so far. Woo! English is hard. I believe only one that I have unwrapped so far uh, was not an, a Jennifer L. Armentrout book. All the others have been, and one I've actually previously already read before, um, but I've actually really enjoyed uh, reading books that my sister has enjoyed and kind of the mystery of not knowing what I'm going to be reading. Um, so it's been a really fun treat for me, and yes, so... She sent me, I believe it was about, I think it was six or seven books, and my mom wrapped them for me, so I didn't know what I would be unwrapping. I didn't know at all any of the books that were wrapped up, and so it's been a fun little treat. Okay, so these are the final three wrapped books from my sister uh, from this first batch. Now I say first batch because uh, I told her uh, since I have dwindled it down to the final three that come this new year I would like to do a second round of this um, and hopefully maybe do a few more books than last time and hopefully not all of them will be Jennifer L. Armentrout. I think I'm going to add a rule where she can only, she can't send any of those because let's face it I've already added two of her series to my series list that I'm currently reading. So I think that's enough Jennifer L. Armentrout for now. <laughs> but I have a feeling all three of these are going to be Jennifer L. Armentrout books as well. So I'm a little curious of what I'm going to be unwrapping. <laughs> um, yes, there's actually dust collecting on top of these now. And we only have one wrapped up in this paper left. Oof. I don't know. And you know what? I think I am going to unwrap the oddball one just for the sake of it. So I'm choosing that one. Okay. Whew. I'm super excited. I'm, I'm also like really nervous. I, I have no idea what this one could be. Usually, I think when my mom wrapped them, she did that seam on the back of them. Okay. Okay. Sarah J. Mass, maybe? Okay, okay. <laughs> It is Jennifer L. Armentrout from Blood and Ash. Now, I believe this is a series my sister has been nuts about. I am curious. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm actually really interested because I have kind of seen this series about, and I know she's been obsessed with the series. I believe she's read all of them. So now I'm like really intrigued. <laughs> ah. Okay, so this is the Jennifer L. Armand Trout book for the month, I guess. <laughs> I guess it's a good thing that I didn't get torn from the spin the wheel earlier because then I would be reading two Jennifer Arm and Trout books in one month. Okay, how many pages is this? This is a thicker one. 
Um, 480 pages. So this is definitely a thicker one. Okay, but I'm actually really interested to read this one and find out what it's all about. Um, because I, like I said, I believe this is a series and I believe this is one my sister has been obsessed with. So, okay, this is probably, if I had to pick one out of Jennifer L. Armantrout's, this is probably one I would have tackled. Um, but I wouldn't have chosen it for myself because I have all these other books right now. So I'm really glad that she sent this one. But yeah, man, it's a big book, though. That's kind of daunting to me. I'm going to have, like, three thick books to read this month. But that's okay. That's okay. I'm up for the challenge. First month of the year. Let's do it. <laughs> so, From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armitrout. All right. <laughs> okay, now I will say... I am going to add a poetry book into the mix for this month as well. Um, the reason I add a poetry book, I've kind of been doing this um, kind of scattered throughout like the last few months. Uh, just because I like to read a little bit of poetry before I lay down, it helps me unwind a little bit. And I really love the, this author, Courtney Peppernell. Peppernell? <laughs> uh, and this one is Time Will Tell. Um, I have read a a few of her other books and really enjoyed them and they really do help me unwind so I'll read a chunk of them every night before bed and I so I can basically finish the whole book within a week or so doing that but I really enjoy doing that so I am going to add this one to the mix and uh, yeah this will be my poetry book for the month and hopefully I will enjoy it because I really enjoy this author and yeah so I'm looking forward to it Okay, so even without one of the books for uh, the thriller based in fall that I decided not to do, um, I have still seven books in this month's TBR. Actually, I still have eight, including the poetry book. I still have eight books for this month's uh, TBR, January 2024. Um, just to see them all together. <laughs> I have a variety going on, that's for sure. This should be interesting. It's so fun, that's why I really enjoy playing this game, and I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Uh, it's going to be a great year. I'm really looking forward to it. I have high hopes for the year of 2024. Um, Yes, I hope everyone has a great reading month as well and has fun with their TBR like I have. And it's just going to be a blast. So I'm looking forward to it. So I will hope to see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for joining me on this journey. And I hope you guys have some great reading. So thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>